All right, I need my little dongle here to get connected with my MacBook. But no HDMI, but that's okay. All right, let's see number three, or four, sorry. And sweet, all right. Okay, so I am a developer, and I have an application that I want to deploy out to production, and uh, that application has some infrastructure needs as well. It needs a Postgres database. So right now, I don't have any Postgres. I've got no database. I've got no infrastructure. And oh, let me make this a little bit bigger here. I've got no application either. So I've got no app. I've got no infrastructure. Let's, uh, let's fix that. Let's do something about that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to kick this all off by pushing a commit to my project that's hosted on GitLab. And so the first thing we should see here is that on my project in GitLab, uh, just like you saw Eddie do, uh, the GitLab Auto DevOps pipeline is going to kick off. And so I wanted to get that started because we're bringing up live infrastructure here, and it takes a few minutes. So I wanted to go ahead and at least get that started. And now we can take a step back, and we can talk about what we're going to do and what we're looking at here. So uh, you know, as Sid introduced earlier for us, uh, the multi-cloud maturity model. Uh, you know, we're now we're kind of moving through those phases there of the further you get along to being able to adopt and use a multi-cloud strategy. Uh, we saw workload portability from Eddie, and then now we also are going to look at application portability here in this demo, where, you know, as a developer with my application, I don't really want to get too worried about the environment it's going to run in or, you know, like what cloud provider, or what services it needs, et cetera. Uh, I want to focus on writing my app and the code, the business logic, et cetera, and I don't want to get bogged down in those details about the infrastructure. So a couple things here that make that a lot easier is first, the, uh, the GitLab's auto DevOps pipeline, which if we take a look at our repo here, uh, we can see that it's not that big. Uh, we have our main.go file, that's my production uh, application. The, the Golang logic for it, Go, my favorite language. <clears throat> and then we have a Docker file, which talks about how to package, build and package the application into a container so we can deploy it to Kubernetes. But there's not really anything in here about how to run the pipelines, how to handle errors, how to you know, execute tests, all that sort of stuff. GitLab's auto DevOps just kind of figures that out for us, uh, how, to, how to build and test and deploy. And there's a, a little bit of input I can put into it. Because if you recall, uh, as this application developer here, uh, I wanted to uh, have Postgres, right? For my infrastructure in my production environment, my app needs to talk to Postgres. So I'm going to basically express that need for Postgres. My app needs Postgres. And I also, I want it to be a managed instance, like a managed service from a cloud provider. That could be Amazon's RDS. That could be Google's Cloud SQL. It doesn't matter. Um, as an app developer, I just want one, please, for my app. Uh, we'll get into a little bit more details in a second here about uh, how we select what type of uh, managed service for our Postgres we want. But uh, let's take a little bit of a different look here now on the other side of the coin. So this whole time here, I have been playing the role of an application developer, right? I'm building my app. I want to put it in production. There is a, another side of the house here of the infrastructure owner, the DevOps people. They, uh, you know, they are the ones that um, you know, are responsible for the infrastructure. Uh, they need to be able to keep costs down. They need to be able to make decisions about policy, security. They've got all that uh, domain expertise and that knowledge about what it takes to get things out into our production environments, make, their make sure they're secure and everything's happy. Um, but, you know, I, so I want to be able to make sure that the things that are running in, in my environments as the infrastructure owner are secure and they're, you know, not going to cost too much and all this sort of stuff. But I also don't want to be bothered by application owners having to come to me or file a service ticket or whatever saying that they need new infrastructure, they need new databases. I want to set these people up with, uh, to be self-service so that they can get the infrastructure on demand when they need it without bothering me too much, but also make sure that it's not too expensive or anything either, because I don't want them doing that. So uh, as Eddie was showing here in our GitLab auto DevOps uh, scenario here, 
uh, I have in my GitLab project, I too have a connected Kubernetes cluster that is serving as my uh, production environment that's, that this project and this code is gonna be deployed out to. So I've got Ingress installed, I've got the GitLab runner installed, and here we go. I also have Crossplane installed on this production environment as well. So uh, we kind of introduced Crossplane real briefly before I mentioned it. So let's talk a little bit more about what Crossplane is. So uh, Crossplane is an open source uh, multi-cloud control plane, and we open sourced it just before KubeCon last year in Seattle. So it's been going for about a year now, but the super fresh news is that it's now available uh, integrated into GitLab and GitLab's Auto DevOps, where it's a GitLab managed app. So if you want to you be using GitLab CI CD stuff and you want to be deploying to production, you can now also use Crossplane as a multi cloud control plane to you know, provision your infrastructure, to uh, schedule and deploy your applications out to those uh, different environments that you have. Um, and do that in a way that's cloud agnostic, to have application portability in our multi-cloud maturity model, to be able to enable that and be able to deploy your applications across multiple clouds now. Uh, and so that's super fresh as in it was merged into master in GitLab yesterday. So this stuff is less than 24 hours old. And I'm getting the, I have a habit of, I, at KubeCons when I demo, I don't ever demo anything that's older than 24 hours. So I like to live by the seat of my pants basically and it's always really exciting. All right, so uh, one more thing to tie it all together here. So, you know, as the infrastructure owner, I've got my auto DevOps pipeline and stuff, I've got my production environment, I've been able to get lab managed apps such as Crossplane to provision resources for the developers that when they need infrastructure, and these are my cheat sheets here, so you're not supposed to be able to read this, don't worry about that. Okay, so this is the thing that ties that all together. So an application developer, they want Postgres. They don't know if that's gonna be Amazon RDS or if that's gonna be Azure's um, Postgres instance or if it's gonna be Google's Cloud SQL, but they just ask for Postgres. Now as the infrastructure owner, I wanna make sure that they're not you know, using some wacky configuration that's not secure or it's super you know, big crazy instance that's gonna cost us a lot of money. So what I've done as the infrastructure owner is enable a number of set classes of service where you know, this, I have a standard service I have, uh, for Postgres, I've got a high, high performance, high IOPS, um, you know, a micro instance, whatever it may be, but I, as the infrastructure owner, have defined these classes of service so that the application developers, they can self-service, they can get their infrastructure and their databases when they need it, but it's gonna be the type that I'm okay with in my environment. So for instance, like this machine tier here, this region uh, using this VPC, this version of Postgres, et cetera. So that's what ties the application uh, developer's request for Postgres to a specific like Cloud SQL or Amazon RDS with a specific class of service. All right, so that ties everything together. So let's look at this thing now. So if we go back to the pipeline that I kicked off, remember at the very beginning I kicked off, I pushed a commit to my production environment to get a, uh, a new, an update to my software there. I didn't have Postgres and I did not have an application, but the uh, pipeline has completed now. So that should mean that if I refresh, we should have a dynamically provisioned uh, Postgres database that is up and running suite, which is there. And we should also have a application that's been deployed as well. Sweet, yep, the application's up and running too. So one more thing here to show you before we do more stuff is that, oh, let me make that bigger or clear. So uh, this, I know it's all jumbled on the screen here, but I'll point at some things here. So this, let's tie this together here. Application owner requested Postgres and that was bound through a resource class, just like uh, storage classes in Kubernetes, to a particular type of uh, Postgres that is a Cloud SQL instance running inside of Google. So we have that up and running, our application's doing stuff. Uh, let's take a quick look and see what the application's doing. Because, oops, wrong one. Let's look at the logs of the application. So yeah, so it's doing stuff, it's doing uh, important production work, and we'll talk about what it's doing in just a second, but here's what I wanna do next. Um, you know, I have my application running, it's got its infrastructure, I want to do something new with it. 
I want to go ahead and update my production instance, right? So let's say version two and a log statement here. And let's go ahead and commit that. Okay, version two of my application. And let's go ahead and push it to my GitLab project. And with that push of my application, uh, we should see a, another pipeline of GitLab auto DevOps pipeline get kicked off in response to that new commit. Okay, great, that's running. And so now that that's running, uh, it's gonna go through the same steps that it did before to initially get everything up off the ground, the infrastructure and the application. It's going to build uh, the container. Uh, it's gonna run tests. And if the tests are okay, it'll go ahead and deploy it out to production. So an important part here, though, is that if you recall, we didn't have an application and we didn't have a database. Now we do. If we're pushing another uh, new version of our application, we want to honor that database, right? We don't want to um, just wipe it out, right? We want to make sure that it's okay there. So let's talk about what this application is doing. As I said, it is a very important production piece of infrastructure, or sorry, application, and it's doing important production work. So uh, the production, the, when we first ran this, the Postgres database came up. Uh, it didn't have any tables in it, so we created a table. And then we started inserting records into the database. Just you know, one, two, three, four, you know, inserting in records, doing our workload here. As I said, it's an important production workload. It's inserting in integers into a database, super important. So now that it's doing that, uh, what we should see here is that the auto DevOps pipeline is running. You know, we've got all this data persisted into the database. And as the auto DevOps pipeline runs, it's going to recycle, or sorry, update the container with a brand new version of our application. So if we do a git pod on that, we should see that the brand new one is running for the last 12 seconds. <clears throat> and if we look at the logs of it, we should see that it picked up right where it left off with its important production workload of inserting in records into that database. Uh, so we you know, kept the data persisted and we updated the, uh, the application there. And so now to tie all this together here, to summarize everything, as the application uh, developer here, you know, I needed to put my application out into production. I needed to get infrastructure for it as well. Uh, but I didn't want to deal with any of the details. I want application portability in our multi-cloud maturity model where I don't have to worry about what environment it's going to run in. It could be Google Cloud SQL, or it could be Amazon, it could be Azure, it could be Alibaba, it doesn't matter. As an application owner, I want application portability and not have to worry about that. But then as the infrastructure owner, you know, they want to make sure that people are you know, getting self-service so the application developer needs infrastructure, they'll get it but it's going to be a particular classes of service that I'm okay with running in my environment. And that's all done in an application portable way so that this will work on any cloud. Uh, and then we put all that together with GitLab Auto DevOps, with Crossplane, our multi-cloud maturity model, et cetera. And what we're seeing here is that we've enabled a, uh, a multi-cloud continuous deployment story uh, finally. So and I think that's really cool. So thank you very much, I really appreciate it.